Right. So now, uh, last time in the SNG tutorial, I had talked about uh, assertions. I had talked about uh, simple text annotations. Right. And I told you in the end how to parameterize the test cases. That means how do I run one test case with multiple sets of data using data provider. In data provider, you have got some number of rows and some number of columns. Rows represents the number of times you want to run the test. And columns, uh, they basically represent the number of uh, test parameters, right? For example, in transfer money, we have got three parameters, account number, bank name, and amount. So we have got three columns over here in which we put the data, right? And when, you, when we run this test, it actually executes, hold on, right, it actually executes multiple times, fine, you will see that it executes two times, because there are two sets of data out here. If I introduce one more row over here, then this test method would be executed three times. Now if I run this by introducing one more row, it will run three times. Uh oh, just a minute. This should be two. You should always increase your row number. Okay, this is the zero means first row, one means second row, two means the third row. Okay. So you run this now and you will see that it executes three times. Fine. Now the problem arises when the number of columns increase because many times, okay, in a test case, you have instead of three or four parameters, you have parameters like 20 parameters, 25 parameters. Suppose it's a big form that you're going to fill, right? So you will have a lot of parameters out there. Fine. So what do I do in that particular case? Okay, in that particular case, we uh, make a hash table and put the data in the hash table. I will be telling you what a hash table is and I'll be telling you how to put the data and all in it. Fine. So just hold on for a few days, you will get to know. But just remember the problem that we have a problem that if there is a function or is there, if there is a test method which requires a lot of parameters, then I cannot write over here an object array with 50 columns and I cannot give 50 parameters out here. It's, it becomes tough, right? So we have a workaround for that as well. I'll be telling you that workaround. Fine. Now uh, let's move a little further. Okay. Till now I have talked about assertion. I have talked about parameterizing the tests and all. I have talked about our tests which are dependent on each other. Fine. Now suppose I make a new class. I'll make a class called test ng underscore annotations. Okay. Now test ng has got a lot of annotations in it. For example, one of the frequently used or one of the, one of the widely used annotation is at the rate test. You can write, for example, public void test case A and you can Execute test. Fine. Similarly, you can have at the rate test public void test B, and you can execute it. Okay. Now you can have as many test cases as we want. Fine. Now there are some post conditions and pre conditions if, like before and after running the test. So for that we have got other annotation methods as well. For example, at the rate um, before test this function. Okay, you can write over here public void before. You can give any name executing and in this I'll write system dot out or print and then before executing right. and there is one more 
annotation known as after this. In this you can write public void after executing and you print out here after exit. Okay, right. Now when you run this, when you run this test in the annotations.java, you will see that both the test cases they execute and in console you get an output like this before executing then executing A and B and after executing. So before test annotation by default it is called before executing all the tests and after test annotation is called after executing all the test cases. Right? Now this is something you can say uh, there's, there's a predefined rule. You cannot change that rule. Okay? There's a predefined rule in TestNG which says that before test has to be called uh, before executing the test case and after test has to be called after executing the test case. Fine. And similarly, there is another annotation known as at the rate before method. In this, you can write public void before method and in this I'll write system dot out dot print and then before and similarly at the rate after method right in this you can write public void after so these are the annotations okay. in this I'll simply print after You have to import these annotations. When you run this now, <coughs> when you run this, you get the results that both the tests have executed and in the console you will see the order printed like this. Before executing, then before executing A after, before then executing B after, after executing. So before method function and after method function are called every time before and after executing the test functions. Okay, there is, this is the order for them. Right, so for example you want to open a browser and execute all the test cases on that particular browser. So you can open the browser in before test and execute it. But if you want to open the browser, a different browser for every test case, then in before method you can open that browser and in after method you can close that browser. Okay, so there is a predefined, um, you can say the, the predefined order in which these functions are executed. Right? So you cannot change that order. And there is no restriction, you can put these functions anywhere in the class, right? They will be executed as per uh, the designated sequence to them. You really don't have the control over that, right? Now, in this, suppose you have a database connection to make. So you can make a DB connection in before test and in after test you can close the DB connection. It, it's completely up to you what you want to do. Fine. So now there are other annotations as well. If you right click on test cases, you go to new um, other. Scroll down. You will see test ng option over here. Expand it you will see test ng class. If you click on next, you will see all the set of annotations which are there. Okay. Out of this, we have studied data provider, before method, after method, before test, after test. Before class and after class are similar to before test and after test. Okay. Before test suite and after test suite are called before and after executing the complete test suite. 
Now, how do I make a test suite? And how do I execute it? For example, I want to put all these test cases, four, class, four, four classes, and all the test methods in them in a single test suite, and I want to execute that single test suite. Fine. So, we do that with the help of a file known as testng.xml. Fine. What I'll do is I'll take this file from an existing project. and paste it under the current project. This is the testng.xml file. Right. In this XML file, you write the complete details of your project, which test case to execute, which test case not to execute, and all everything. So it actually helps you a lot. For example, you can give, this is the suite name. I have given the suite name as my uh, sample suite. Right, and you can give the name of the tests over here. That is the first test is suppose login and change password. The class corresponding, you can give any name out here, it is not necessary. You can give any name. The class corresponding to it is test cases, that means test cases dot inside the test cases package under the source folder, you have a file called as login and change password dot java. You can click on F2 and this kind of window will appear to rename the file. You can copy the file name from here and you can put the file in here. Right? There is another test known as parameter rising test right and the class corresponding to it is test cases dot parameterizing tests, right? Then there is another class called assertions. You can give any name, right? Class corresponding to that is assertions underscore test and z dot java. So you can give it over here, test cases dot assertions underscore test ng and you can have another class uh, annotations in test ng so it is test cases underscore test ng underscore annotations Fine. So these are the five classes which are listed in this file like this. This is the class corresponding to the first test. This is the class corresponding to the second test. This is the class corresponding to the third and the fourth test. So you mention all the test cases in this single file and then you can run this single file. The test cases would be executed on the order from top to bottom. By the order top to bottom and they will become part of one test suite. Okay, now if I run this as testng.xml, I right click on this, I say run as testng suite. You right click on testng.xml and run it as testng suite. So what will happen is that test cases, all of them would execute. You see that? My sample suite login parameterizing assertions annotations. Login is failing in do login. The rest of the two tests are skipping because they were dependent and all the others are passing. Okay. Right. So this is how you can execute 
your test cases in batch. I have not written any Selenium code in them because I have actually not, I have just given you basics of Selenium right now. I have not taken everything in depth. Okay, now let's take a small example, right, and see how you can actually execute the, <coughs> I'm sorry, how you can actually execute Selenium along with test engine. 